David Lozo, and I'm a Southern California-based artist who specializes in Day of the Dead style artwork. I think like with music, life is a journey. From the beginning to the end, the chords, the chorus, they all make up these experiences that you have. And at the end, it all comes back around. And I think my art really just tries to show those ideas of things past, things present, and things forgotten. I grew up in a household that was fully supportive of music. Um, I took piano lessons as a kid. My mom is, is a classical piano player. That support of music always filled the house. To this day, there's a music room, there's a grand piano in my, in my mom's room where she plays every day. Being surrounded by that creativity, even though it wasn't art, it was still that energy, seeing someone sit down and make something. I went to college. I got a graphic design degree because my mom said I had to have a job that would pay the bills, not just be a starving artist. Um, so I really got to enjoy the creative side of, you know, in a real world environment that, you know, you can have an art job. I didn't know that you could do that. It was about seven or eight years after college, a snowstorm back in um, New Hampshire where I'm from. Trapped in the house because you can't go anywhere because there's three feet of snow outside. And I was moving some things around the apartment and found my old paint stuff from college old supplies. I said, oh, and so I started playing with those. And as I was working with those you know, techniques again, I realized that design was not filling some of the void. I had urges to do more creativity, really found this spark to start following that again, and, and really started painting more, kind of sketching, just really playing with everything, all different mediums, trying to find a voice to what I like to do while keeping a day job. So I was sketching at lunch, I was drawing after work, and that went that way for three or four years, kind of relearning the skills and really just having no rules or boundaries and just kind of finding my voice again. I came out to California, my girlfriend having lived here, um, I was excited about the opportunity to change. The art scene um, in New England, it's very traditional. It's pictures of boats and lobsters and fish and, and seascapes. It was nothing really inspiring. I think when the opportunity came up and I, it was just time to try something new, to take a risk, to jump at something and try and start my life different. My first experiences in San Diego in one of the Day of the Dead festivals was just seeing the marigolds in the cemetery, seeing these pictures of loved ones along with the soda they drank, the food they ate, their favorite sports team, kind of all the happy things that would remind the family of their life. It really seemed the core of what I wanted my art to be, to capture that moment, to give that remembrance, but in just a pure, innocent way. There was no sadness, it was more of a happy experience and I think that was really the core foundation that really gave me a direction. Doing live demos is really a key to what I do. I love working out there in front of a crowd. So to be out there and be doing live demos really crafted the paint style. I discovered gouache, which is basically like an opaque watercolor, and that really kind of gave me the direction. The transparency matched so well with the line work that I finished my paintings with. And that acrylic gouache and enamel combination gives my unique look to my image, but also lets me craft and move fast and kind of capture what my head sees. Even though I don't play an instrument, I feel like the crafting of artwork, the pieces I use, the brush, the paints, the canvas, the steps I take, it's the same as using pedals and effects and different amps and kind of building a sound. Both of us are trying to reach the same voice, the same imagery, the same package at the end, and using everything available to us to do that. My iPod is like an eclectic trash can. It is full of everything from rap to hillbilly to country and everything in between, and it really helps me paint. I spend long amounts of time on the road, time in my studio. Music is the soundtrack. Because music is such an important part of my life, I was really excited to get the opportunity to work with Fender on a line of guitars. And we even got to go to the factory in Ensenada and watch them being made. Seeing the artwork actually come out there and seeing it on the guitar was the first moment that really sank in that this was happening. To see these guitars coming off the line, to see them shiny, to see my work on there, it really struck me chord that this is real, that the Fender guitars and my work are going to be out there. The unique challenge of designing work for guitar body is something I had not had to do before. Most of the time on the custom guitars I'd done, it was full coverage. When you're designing around strings and pickups and having to leave room for the bridge and making sure the work flows around, it's something that really has to take time to craft a composition that will really accentuate the curves and the structure of the guitar. Another project that mirrors this journey of the guitars is my kids' book. The same concepts, the same love of music really resonates throughout the book. It's about two little skeletons who find their parents' album, and they spend the next 25 paintings dressing like the albums from Johnny Cash to ACDC and all the bands in between acting out who they are and really finding their voice, and they find their true voice by being themselves. And I feel like that's really 
kind of the correlation with the artwork that I'm doing now is the right artwork will find you. The right guitar design, the right the concept that you love the most will be the one that speaks to you. I can't play a guitar, you know, I can't play any instruments, painting is what I do, but I imagine that sharing the voice is the same. The same inspiration, the, the crafting this and putting yourself out there and releasing it to the world, I can share that experience. I feel like that's a camaraderie that artists have, that artisans have, that everyone has some little piece of in their life, something that they nurture and craft and then release to the world and it's that little piece that I think we can all share.